show is sponsored by Hive Mind CRM. It is more than just a CRM. It is a real estate and business mastermind that comes with an all-in-one CRM. You can have unlimited websites and users. You can call, text, RVM, and email all in one user interface. And you can set up custom automations for any type and multiple businesses. 65% of companies start using a CRM system within the first five years of business. Once implemented, the hive mind will save you on marketing, give you more time, and make more money. One of our users has had his first $100,000 month using our system in June. We want to see you automate and accelerate your business. Text us at 210-972-1842 for future meetings. And of course, to get our $1 course on how to make more than six figures on one land deal. You can schedule your free demo today at hivemindcrm.io. All right, we're here with Gino Paloma from Atlanta, soon to be moving to my soon to move to Florida because he doesn't like Atlanta anymore for whatever reason. But um, <laughs> we'll talk about that a little later on. But uh, we're going to start off with uh, how'd you end up here, man? I, I think I saw you on a podcast maybe like six months ago. You you like a year and a half into wholesaling and you did like some crazy astronomical number in like six months or something like that that I remember. And then we ended up meeting through Steve Train, and then now we're here like eight, six months later, a year later. So can yeah, you kind exactly. of start off how you ended up into real estate and all that stuff? Yeah, so I started in real estate. I just saw it from a YouTube video from Max Maxwell uh, when I was 19. I was back at the end of 2018. So yeah, I was uh, constantly trying new businesses back and forth, some wins, some failures in there. And then, yeah, like I said, I was just on the couch watching YouTube, you know, entrepreneur stuff. And it came up a Max Maxwell video about wholesale real estate. I was like, what is this? Started looking at it and uh, watching as many videos as I could for about a week and then just took some massive action, bought banded signs, you know, the We Buy Houses signs you see on the side of the road. Started putting those all over the county I lived in. And uh, fast forward about a month later from that, like at the beginning of November. So this was about beginning of October, end of September when I first found it. And then by November 7th, I closed my first deal. So it happened all pretty quick. And so, yeah, it all started right there from that YouTube video. YouTube, people understand YouTube that you can find all the answers in YouTube, but it's all there and people are like getting traction and doing big things from it. And I feel like, oh, you're not going to find it on YouTube. So I'm a product of podcasts, you're a product of YouTube. So I mean, it's all from digital, digital information out there and we just kind of make stuff happen. So how long have you been in real estate? So yeah, so I started end of 2018, really first full year. I mean, I did one deal, but so I've been in it, I guess, you know, if you count from 2019 on about two and a half years. A lot of people ask, like, um, I always like asking this too because I'm, I'm a previous truck driver. So, it's like, you ever work at, like any crazy uh, restaurants, telemarketing? Like, what did you do in the past just to give people a perspective? Because, yeah, yeah, that's people a good think question. we're doing real estate. So, I've never worked for someone a day in my life. I made sure of that from day from when I was age 12 and on. But I started selling stuff on uh, like shoes. I used to buy like the Kobe 8 Christmas edition Easter when I was 12. Made my mom wait outside wow. for any special edition ones that like, Foot lockers, champs, when they were released, and I would just wait there, buy them, buy them for like 150, sell them like two weeks later for 220. And at 12 years old, you know, that's enough for like three months of ice cream there at school or donuts or whatever. So I would just keep doing that. And um, then at like 13, I started buying stuff at Ross and Marshall's, like I was worth the stuff and selling that $200 stuff. What that's all about clothes and some sneakers and cleats. And then I would turn that 200 to like 275. I would just keep doing it and keep doing it. And uh, an yeah, I mean, say it again. Yeah, I was doing it for Gary V. This is back in 20, this is 2012, 2013. Wow. I was doing this. And then I uh, I started getting a little bigger. I started buying like Yeti coolers. My dad became a dealer and I would just buy bulk of them. And uh, he kind of did the same thing I did. Like he was not really a storefront. He just became a dealer just to buy them cheap and sell them more. And uh, for him, it was mostly pleasure. For me, I was trying to make a business out of it. And then, um, yeah, I sold, uh, I started buying headphones from China and I made like 60K in one month, senior year of high school. Ended up getting that stopped. PayPal froze my account because I wasn't even 18 yet. And so, yeah, it was a long journey and then leads me into high school or college. College, I was a I was trading stocks. I was day trading at like 16, 17. So right before college, 
I started doing it more intense, intensely in college freshman year. And then I ended up losing most of my money. I was like, screw this. And this leads me to the time of about finding wholesaling. That's crazy. It's crazy that you never had a job. I mean, I thought uh, hats off to you or give you a round of for applause. Sure. Yeah, that's yeah I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. I mean, I've helped like I've worked jobs, but for free, you know, just to do it, you know, for friends or whatever, family, friends or. No, it's definitely a, it's not not a not a small feat what you did there. So I commend you for it's, it's kind of it's kind of curious that you went from flipping sneakers to flipping real estate. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Flip, thought paper, about it like that. Flipping paper, you same thing, just larger assets exactly. or larger larger price points. Exactly. So, next up is like flipping apartments for you. Shoot, yeah, I've done one. I'm, I'm foreseeing yeah. the future for you. <laughs> Maybe it's developing them eventually. At, at the rate you're going, you're going to be flipping apartments. <laughs> if you no, nah, it's, it's cool. You did one though, man. That's awesome. So that's that's pretty that's pretty amazing, man. So you're in the Atlanta market. Are you just in Atlanta? Or are you in multiple markets now? Yeah, just Metro Atlanta. Within you just know two Atlanta. hours of Atlanta. Yeah. So you're doing all these deals just in Atlanta. Yeah, just in Metro Atlanta, exactly. Then um, how many deals? Did you, how many deals did you do last year? Uh, last year we did sixty-eight. Close deals, yeah, awesome. awesome. Um, I think I think it's one. Uh, I just I think so. I, I think um, people progress, and the how far they progress is pretty amazing to see. So like, you kind of start wholesaling your first deals, and now you're actually getting the private money to actually buy and do your own flips, and now you're mm-hmm. actually flipping your own properties, right? Yeah, exactly. Now you know I started out like you said wholesaling mostly, and I still wholesale mostly. That's what. But last year I think we did probably like fifteen or twenty of those. Sixty eight were wholesales where we would just get in buy the property and sell it as is on the market yeah that's awesome man now it's kind of cool that um you can progress that fast once you have a track record and the money finds you and then you're like oh money finds me i'm in, I'm in the money now you just exactly like, you just escalate it. It from there escalate it from there so tell me um a little bit about like where what types of deals are you doing in the metro are you doing short-term rentals are you just doing flips all that stuff in the metro Atlanta area? Yeah, good question. So most of our deals, it's mostly wholesale. Um, I would say last year, 68, you know, the remaining 20 of them might have been hotels where we would take down private money, put them on the market or sell to open doors. So the remaining 48 deals. Um, I also bought a 17 unit. I'm not including that in the 68. I bought a 17 unit and I bought two cabins and one other single family. The, those two cabins and the one single family I'm using Airbnb and the 17 units a long term, but those aren't included in the 68. So really 48 wholesale deals, 20 being 20 hotels, you know, three new uh, single families and then one 17 unit last year. So that's awesome, man. I really want to dig in on this because you're one of the few wholesalers I know selling the open door. Are you still doing that right now or is it still? Um, so well, we actually started, we, we haven't sold that many to them in the last like three or four months because they started like getting pretty strict on you being on title before giving you a net offer. And what, that's what I used to do. Like I did like the 20 with them without even with getting a net offer or contract before I even bought it. So I knew for sure what their price would be. But I did that. Yeah. Like I said, 20, 20 different times. I'm not against it, but I'm actually getting better deals now selling properties for even higher or just that open door. How are you doing uh, that? Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm selling most of them on the market. Every single one goes on the MLS. Okay. Every one of our wholesale deals goes on the MLS. So not that open door. Sometimes they do overpay on the market, but now I'm getting other hedge funds that are paying more than the market too. So I'm getting lucky, not lucky, but I'm getting, I'm in the right position to be, you know, taking advantage of some of these hedge funds. No, that's, that's great. I mean, it's, it's great to you getting your buyers or something up to par. Like we're, we're trying, we just got a, a, a lender reach out to us that'll do the same thing for land. So we're going to start wholesaling land. Same really? Thing. Nice. Yeah, we don't buy it. So that's the thing too. A lot of people, I talk to it, not that you know, because we talked about it, but we don't even buy these deals. We just put them equitable interest on the MLS. And so we're not even closing on them. Oh, wow. Okay. Are you disclosing that with your seller or how do you just yep, everything's you? disclosed like two or three times the minimum on the agreement when we go over it with them and also um when we're negotiating this is how we can get you your price okay mm. so you're almost doing like a novation with no repairs exactly so novation is exactly what we're 
Um, you know, like the one we were doing with Eric Brewer is the same thing, innovation. It's a novation type deal without the novation. Because what we're going to do at closing is we can decide whether we want to use the novation documents or do we just double close, depending on what the lender says, right? If you're getting an FHA lender, you can't double close. But reality is in this market, you know, because they got a 90 day season period, so you have to do a novation. But reality is in this market, I'm never going to take an FHA. You know, that's my last loan I'm going to take. I'm going to take all these other, or I'm just going to take a cash buyer, right? So you can pick and choose. And so reality is like, we're not even doing a novation. We're just doing double close and we're just using the MLS as a dispo tool. Wow. Okay. We, uh, we, we've been doing, we've been doing something similar, but it's, it's kind of different. We've been doing it with land. We've been doing, uh, we'll actually take title to it. We'll, we'll negotiate. Yeah, your whole title, pretty much. Yeah, we, we, we'll take title to it with a little down payment and then we'll wholesale it with the terms on the back end. But yeah. it's interest, interesting that you're not even, you're just doing that, you're just doing it with the contract. So, no, how do you, is there like a certain, like, because I know you don't go through Steve Chang's training. Steve Chang's training is amazing. I love Steve Chang. Um, sure. do, do you use that for negotiating your novation? No, nothing of the sort. Steve stuff. I mean, our scripts, uh, you know, has bits and pieces, but nothing about the novation part. Or it's not even novation we're pitching, just none of the list on the market. It's nothing to do with anything that Steve did. We created ourselves and how we how we present the offer to the seller. Um, you kind of fell into it and now you're running with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we we got help from a bunch of mentors. Okay. Um, and we just, you know, tweaked it to what we feel, you know, we're, every day we're tweaking it even, you know, to make it more, it sound better, you know, so. Do you have KPIs as far as like your close rate for that, for that type of transaction? I mean, like to the, be honest now we've done, we went, that's a good question. So like before we're treating it as a different transaction. Yeah. So that's not a good way to do it as a sales coach as me. So I'm freaking telling all my guys, that's the only transaction we're doing. Forget that. So it's just our close ratio might've went up. Right. So last year, our close ratio was like 18%. This okay. year it's at like 23, 24%. So it okay. definitely went up, you know, just by instituting new, new, new processes. Exactly. Cause I can pay more for the month for the deal now. Ah, okay. Okay. That's okay. That's interesting, man. It's, there's so many, uh, you hear, you hear new things and how people are doing it. Um, I'll start. <laughs> it's just, it's just crazy. It's just crazy to me, man. I, I love, I love the the many facets of real estate exactly. and how people are le- leveraging it and using it to their own benefit. You know, everyone's got their own thing, you know, and how they pitch it. And it's not, my thing won't work for some people, other things, you know, it might work perfect for other people, you know? Yeah. So are you looking to start acquiring assets now? Or you just strictly um uh, to be honest with you, this year I'm just looking to build up our team. They I'm I'm funny now, I'm buying a cabin next month, but still I'm trying to look at the long term um, of our company. And we're trying to get to at least by the end of the year, like eight hundred to a million a month. And then at that point is when I'll start looking at figuring out what I should hold and what I should not. And I'm gonna do it through a different entity because reality is, and that's what I keep getting to is it's the hottest market of our lifetime right now. And so I need to milk as much cash as possible when I'm here. Like I need to just take advantage of it. And I've learned that from a lot of big mentors I've talked to since I've gone through three recessions or three crashes and from the eighties on, and they all said the same thing to me, like, Gina, this isn't the time to go buying rentals unless you're getting home run deals, you know, don't start buying rentals. And again, these are, everyone has their own opinion, but this is the time to stack your cash, stack as much cash as possible because it's not going to be like this, you know, forever. So yeah. that's my goal. I'm stacking cash and um, I'm trying to build this. And, you know, not that I'm saying I'm not going to take advantage of some nice deals that come away. Like I have a 17 unit or another Airbnb next month I'm buying. But my main goal right now this year is so focused is to grow that wholesale company and, you know, grow that revenue per month. What's what's your goal for revenue per month? Oh, a million a month. That's what we're going to do. A million, a million a month this year. No, uh, by the end of the year, probably by like November, December. Okay. And your goal this year is to be at six million. That's our target. That's a pretty big BHAG, you know, big area, audacious goal. But um, we think the way we're lining up for especially even this month, uh, we have no problem. I mean, we're on pace to get up to there. Um, now it's not going to be easy. But again, our goal at the end of the year is to be around, you know, 800 to which is a big spread, but. You know, it's really our big goal was to buy 2023 to get to that 
but we feel we can we could probably tap into it this year if we do everything we're supposed to in our projections. Nice, nice. That's uh big audacious goals. Yeah, big audacious exactly. goals. Exactly. No, I, I I like it because it, it um you kind of your 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 limit is so high that you're like, hey, if I get to four, it's all right. <laughs> we did okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we land at five, we'll be fine. You know, like we we all did okay. How how big is your team? How many VAs do you have? Acquisitions, all that stuff. That's a good question, man. It's so changing. Um, my COO would know better than me. I would say we have roughly around like 23 people. Um, and I would say half and half are VAs and some are Americans. Right? Half are Americans, half are VAs. I'll be honest. It's somewhere around there, give or take. 20 people. Yeah. That's a lot of people. Yeah, so about 12 VAs, 12 Americans. That's including me and Chandler. So really – 10 other people americans so let's talk about this so um chandler's your coo right Mm -hmm. are you like the visionary he's your integrator type yeah that's the role right now so only role in the business i'm in is i'm in the sales director role okay and the visionary that's it gotcha only roles i'm accountable for right and chandler's coo all right. So he's ahead of all directors, including me as a sales director and then also financial uh, department. Um, I think it's uh, so you, you have your you have your man. I'm so unorganized. This is so it's so funny talking to you because like us really I'm all over the place. I, I run everything. <laughs> do it all. I do it all. I'm, I'm the I'm, I'm the guy. <laughs> I like that. But I'm, I'm I'm trying like I said, I'm I'm hiring I'm hiring more people but um how to do you strictly off are you are you off uh, attraction and I mean I see it on your on your wall is yeah, that there like, it is right your, there. Whole, your whole your whole thing is that how you run your run, uh, um so that's a good question we actually mix up traction and like some of the sharper stuff I don't know if you know Empire like Gary Harper I don't know if you ever heard of him but he does a lot of co- business consulting um for real estate investors I actually short story is I went to the same church as Gary Harper. Oh really? That was your age. Up in Indiana? Up in Indiana. That's where I'm from. Oh really? Yeah. So you know about Gary then? I didn't know about him as far as so the back then. Was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then. But yeah, that's been I've been 10 years out of that. So I knew him 10 years ago before he that's did funny. what he's doing now. So I knew pre-Gary Harper from who he that's is. That's crazy. Now. Yeah, damn. That's a small world up there. So yeah, yeah, no, Gary Harper, uh, he runs a similar system to Empire or to Traction. It's called Empire and it's pretty similar, a lot of the things. And so we're mixed between the two, All right? We'll do our BTL in probably a week from now. So we're still using some of that stuff, but yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know, was, I didn't know what, was, what his product was called, but I, that's the first time I heard it. Oh, like Empire, I, yeah. I've, uh, I, he recently, it was weird though, because like I'm out of that space for 10 years now. And then he keep popped up again. I'm like, what the heck? Like, what, yeah, where, are all these people coming, where are all these people coming back from my past? You know, and because um, like um, I knew a bunch of people that were in real estate back then, but I didn't really know what aspect. I mean, I knew nothing about wholesaling or real estate or anything all about back then. So it's kind of interesting seeing all these people pop up from my past. Like, um, you know, David Richter. Yeah. He actually went to the same high school as him. He was a grade older than me. Really. Yeah, in Indiana too. In Indiana too. So we went, we went to the same high school. You guys all lived well. around each other over there. I mean, it, it, we went to the same. It was pretty much same community. Think about that. Same community lo- localized yeah. up there. So I I know I know. Uh, and he just he just popped up recently too. I'm like, oh, in that world. So I actually just signed up for a CFO uh, CFO nice. Thing nice today. It was actually yesterday. That's funny. Today. So that they're like breeding said, people we, over we, there. Huh. The you guys are breeding people in Indiana. I mean, you can say I'm a product of that because I am. Because I, I grew up, I lived up there for 20 years. So it's kind of interesting that my, my past is like coming up again in its own way, which is weird in yeah, my opinion. Sure. So like all of his staff, I know all of his staff in some faction. I might not know them personally, but I know who they are. Who, which one? All of the, all of the Gary Harper staff. Oh, Gary Harper. Yeah, because they all were from around there, right? Yeah, they're all from there. Like they're, Everybody's from there. So like it's just, oh yeah, they're all from the church too, right? Brandon and McCurdy and Austin McCurdy, all them. Yeah, I know all of them. I know all of them. They might not know me, but I know who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was a it's, a, it's a big community out there. So, 
it's uh it's interesting seeing everybody come up the where from yeah that, that is different crazy spaces, different spaces but enough about that it's kind of cool that you're using their their system though empire thanks that that's the first time i heard of the name of it so it's kind of interesting talking about that so that to kind of give a brief description about that that's to structure and organize and manage your business yeah exactly just like traction gives you the tools gives you the meeting structures gives you you know what you should be doing in terms of you know hiring firing process maps of your company too like what you know what each process should look like you know we'll process map it which is what gary um what, what's her his wife uh, what's her name susan right susan's really good at so gary's obviously the the guy that created sharper um and susan's his wife and you know she's really good at process maps. so yeah it's, it's just a layout it's like an overall um like business consulting business program i guess it's like a like they call it, you know, it's like a empire system is like the iOS or the, you know, the operating EOS. system for your business, for your business. Yeah, no, it's what like, I was mentioning is like the iOS is the operating system for Apple, you know, and so like exactly what EOS is like the entrepreneur operating system. But I was just referring yeah. it back to iOS. Same thing. So it's just the operating system for your business. So, uh, yeah, that's that's cool, man. Um, what? What marketing techniques are you doing and what's working the best for you right now as far as outbound acquisition? Yeah, so we do cold call text, uh, TV, just started direct mail. Um, very, very small, very small right now. Small, it's not a word, very small right now. And then we do some like pay for lead uh, for SEO stuff. Need to sell my house fast. Um, but what's working best right now is it's still probably SMS. Um, I got to look at our contracts on the year. I know we're at like 42 right now. And I would say, let me look right now. I'll tell you, but I would say probably, I mean, over half has to be SMS. I mean, just assuming, I mean, just yeah. so much SMS leads. So one, two, three. I'm over here to count it. I don't have the report in front of me. Eight. I got to count. Nine. <laughs> Doing everything for you guys right here. 15, <laughs> the, 18. Five in look. Yeah, it's like 21 out of the 42. So half are just SMS. No, uh, a lot of people are like, oh, SMS is out the window. It's up there. I'm like, no, it's still working no, very it's, well. It's still working very well. Because all a lot of our clients are using SMS too. So it's kind of it's kind of cool that you're getting a lot of traction with that. Because SMS you can you can touch so many people quickly. Oh, you can nail them. For sure. Yeah, I like I like I like the SMS. It's uh definitely um takes your stuff to another level. So oh, SMS sure. cold calling. Yeah, TV. Oh, let's talk about TV. So there's only I've only heard of one other person talk about TV being in TV ads. Let's talk really? about uh, um yeah, I heard uh the dude out of Vegas. Pineda. Uh, huh? Pineda. Ryan on TV too? No, yeah. it's uh, the other one I heard out of Vegas. Um, uh, I can't remember his name. It's a white guy. He's an older white guy that does TV. Do you mean honest. Doug Hopkins? No. So he's Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. I don't know. I don't know. There's only one, of, like I said, there's only one person I've heard that's doing TV ads. So let's talk about TV ads. You're doing TV ads um, and you're like on Fox, right? Yeah, Fox is, is on Fox. Um, it's on all the local channels. So, okay. um, local you know, channels. we don't man we don't manage it. We have a company that does it. Um, sure. They manage people all across the country. Um, manage Pinedas in Vegas, and so they they bid. You know, we give them a budget. <laughs> excuse me. Shoot, and um, every like a month ahead on commercials, and so you know it's all over. I mean, you might see me on Family Feud time. You might see me at you know, Judge Judy all over the, you know, different weird times, but yeah, they have an algorithm. They run, know when to buy the commercial and not to. Gotcha. Right. And how much are you allocating towards ads and what's like your been ROI? Uh, so right now we were about, so last year in total, uh, it was like a 2.7 X return. So 200. Gotcha. Just lower than our three we wanted, but we started off pretty rough. I had to look at the actual numbers. I think it was something like, I have to look at these numbers here. I can do it in two seconds, but this year we're seeing a lot better return. Um, I think we're going to be projecting like a four and we're spending about 30 grand a month right now. Last year was like 20. Yeah. Last year was a little less. 
um, like ended up being at like 25. Um, so that's insane. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a cheap one for sure. So yeah, it actually was last year was a 2.3 and we spent 340,000 and made 800. Wow. Okay. But the key you got to think to a TV is not where you can't measure, which is the most like TV is the, I mean, that's like the big baller budget one, right? And I'm not saying I'm a big baller, but this is what comes with that. It's also the credibility from TV. You know, when sellers see you on TV, the deals are so much bigger and there's so much, you know, so much brand you're building. If I can stay on TV for 10 years, I would do it just breaking even every month, you know? That's what Steve Trang would always tell me because at the beginning we started off pretty rough and he's like, bro, if I'm breaking even on TV, I'm doing it forever, you know, because the brand you're building on TV as well. And it's just so on, you can't predict that how much that's bringing in in the future. Wow. Okay. That's, that's, that's good perspective. That's good perspective. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like podcasting. You don't have to see an ROA right away, but it's one of those things where, Exactly. As, as your name gets out there more for podcasting, and you build up, you kind of build up the audience. So I, I can see that TV. I, I, so man, you spent a quarter of oh, three hundred grand on TV last year. That's crazy. Yep, that's crazy, man. I, I think that, I think it's really cool that you have your KPIs and you can like, like I literally asked you that question like, yeah, I did two point three, and you, you got your KPIs right in front of you, so you know you know you know your numbers, you know your ROI, you know it's worth it to do it. And you just can consistently do it at that point. Exactly. Yeah. We're just every day we're, we're matching, you know, certain KPIs. We're looking at them, measuring certain KPIs. So if you're spending $30,000 a month, you have an acquisition team of 20, or your team is just 20 people. Mm-hmm. What is your like monthly spend on like all outbound outreach, all outbound ads? So all outbound marketing is it's roughly around like 50,000. So okay. a lot of it's TV, right? So, and we get all VA texters and stuff like that. So it's pretty cheap in terms of, you know, that, that part of the business, but in total with lists, skip tracing, all that good stuff, cold calling, I said mail, we just started, that's including like 5k a month. We just started spending mail, like literally last month. So, um, you know, most of it takes up TV, but we're trying to blast TV up like 50k by May in TV a month. Gotcha. So, um, do you have like one ad you use or you run like multiple ads? to? Split yeah, it? it's the same for the last year plus. Um, I'm probably going to film a new one soon. They're talking about it, but I'll let the guys manage for like 50 plus people nationwide for t- just real estate. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, uh, you'll probably get some hits on the, the TV, the TV side, just from podcasting about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's crazy how that works, man. That is, it's interesting. It's interesting. TV. I've never even thought about doing TV ads. It just hasn't crossed my mind at all. Really? Yeah, they're powerful, man. There's a long-term play. Definitely a long-term play, which is cool. Long-term plays are always cool. You never know what you, uh, you never can re- your like realize gains. You never realize how much, how much revenue you can create from it. But that's cool, man. I mean, I'll so, tell you how much some guys are doing. Some guys in LA, the same guy that uh, runs the ads, he has a partner. Um, a guy that he does the TV, they spent a month in, in LA and they're making like three and a half X a month. Wow. In TV ads uh, only. Wow. Okay. That makes sense. A million a month. You got, you got some perspective in my head. My mind's working now. Yeah. So you got guys doing crazy numbers just in LA. That's all their numbers. And Doug Hopkins, which I don't know if you know him, but he's the big guy. Phoenix um, and Darren, they're the guys that run the TV commercials. And obviously Doug's also a home buyer and they, they're going to do like 20 million this year. And it's all TV ads, 20 million in revenue and TV ads spend like last year, they did 12 million and they're pretty open about it. And they netted like 5.7 after everything. Cause they only have like two acquisition managers. And one of them is actually Doug Hopkins, like Doug, the owner. So, and they netted 5.7 last year. Wow. So the TV ads, I mean, that's not so, just a, it's, it's a definitely not just a long term too. Like these guys are making some crazy money off it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, they have to at least to afford to sustain it. You know, you have like 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 Steve said that you have to at least break even at that point to run it. Just to yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're spending. I think like for the Phoenix guys, they're spending like two fifty to three hundred a month. So it's like two fifty, and so you know that's what two point five a year, or a little bit more than that. It's like three million a year, whatever it is. So no, it's uh, three million. Yeah, three million know. a year. Two point two point seven five. Yeah, you're right. 2.75 yeah, so two point seven five, whatever it is, they're spending a lot. They're nailing it. That's a lot of that's a lot of credit card points. Yeah, exactly. But they have to, but you have to pay in, in the wire because they won't let you pay credit card. But that would be the the dream right there. Yeah, if you run it through Amex, your your Amex card, and just run it every you'd be month. racking two percent back. Crazy. You'd be getting some good money right there. You get some good money. So you have to pay through wire. I mean, I didn't know that. See, I'm I'm learning a lot through this. Well, that's just their company. That's just their company. They want you to pay through a wire, so you can't like dispute it later on. You know. When you're spending that much money, like you could easily dispute it. True, man. This is okay. That's some insight. I like. I like the man. That's 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 true. That's some good insight. So, um, what are so you said you bought your first apartment complex? What things are you kind of bringing in do to hit that high um or high like gen? Ugh. What are things you are you gonna do to get to that high gross revenue level of six million that you're trying to hit? So what, what things are you implementing? Oh, like this year, like we're gonna, I mean, obviously we're, we're spending assets. Yeah. yeah, we're spending, no, we're still doing the same single families, right? The 17 units is something I got off of a little list, but no, um, you know, what we're still targeting SFR, single family homes, and, you know, we're just doing more volume, right? We've actually hasn't upped our marketing at all. We're just trying to get our conversions up. We very honed in on a lot of conversions. And within the first, you know, we're, what, we're about, you know, 75 days into the year. And we're at 42 contracts. And so just to give you an idea, like last year, we closed about 80% of our 68. So like even last year, what was that making us at like 85 to 90 contracts total last year? Whatever equals 0.85 to equal 68. We're not doing that right now. We got a lot of math on this podcast, but like we're already almost halfway done, you know, what we did last year in contracts. And I highly credit that. It's no marketing spend increase. It was all just conversions and focusing on like different systems to put them in place and um, measuring really specific numbers. And so now we're going to start upping marketing, right? Now we can afford to do that because we got our people in place. We got our systems in place. We can up now. We know what we can, what we can expect for our, you know, conversions at certain levels. Gotcha. No, that makes sense. It's huge. It's huge, man. It's huge knowing your numbers, especially when you're operating at scale, because one one little divot can take a hole in your pocket. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, you got to know these specific numbers, and you know it's not necessarily like you're just gonna live and breathe, you know, die by them. But you need to know what's expected, and that's what we've been doing the last two months. And we changed our closing process, and we you know like added that new feature on MLS, and our deal size goes from 30k to 45, just like that. Like just do the math. I mean, you just increase your deal size by there's more math for us over here, but I think that's by like 50%. I mean, 30% 30 or 45. So if you can increase no marketing at all, but you increase your deal, you can increase your average profit by 45 grand. And again, that's no adding additional marketing. Like how much more are you gonna net a year by doing that? I mean, yeah. you would do 15 times 70 or 68 deals, what we did last year. You know, we would net for everyone listening. One one over a million dollars more by just doing one simple process. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. Some simple simple things. It's like a little multiple, tweak. A little tweak. One little, one little tweak raising rents. Do five of those little tweaks, and that's how we get to six million. Gotcha. That's like yeah. uh like the apartment the apartment amplification. One little twenty five dollar rent roll raise. On yeah. A exactly. Table. Yeah. Water fee. Water fee. And you amplify your uh you amplify your NOI. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. Um, so what 
So you're, you're looking for deals in Atlanta. Where can people submit deals to you if they want to submit a deal to you? Yeah, just come to my Instagram. It's just Gino. You got my name on here, G-I-N-O underscore. And there's actually two underscores. So it's underscore, underscore, but it should come up. Palumba, P-A-L-O-M-B-A. Yeah, Palumba. so. So, um, and you're just doing single family. Any lots, anything else? I mean, we'll, we'll sell whatever we cost? get. Whatever we get, you know. Um, we can. We have buyers for everything. Just for us, we're focused on I mean, just marketing wise for us, you know, our outreach. We're just, we're honing in on what we're good at, you know, so. Yeah, know, family. Do you have any local meetups? Yeah, yeah, actually we do. So we're having one this week, actually on Thursday. So it might be already past where it's aired, but 317, um, we're having one six to eight, but we have weekly ones. We're starting to fly some people out. Um, hopefully next, we're trying to get Steve to come one, one month. It's like pulling, you know little teeth out of people trying to get Steve to come. But, um, you know, we have Stephanie Betters coming this week. She's the owner of Left Main, um, the Salesforce CRM. And, um, you know, she does 200 plus deals, 1,000 units. So she's going to be speaking, and hopefully we can get some more people. We might try to get Eric Brewer next next month, so, and okay. uh, May. So, yes, sir. So they can find that out on your Instagram, those locations. Yeah, find out on my Instagram, reach out to me on Instagram. And there's, there's actually a post I just made. And also um, it's in my bio as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Um, I appreciate you coming on, man. We covered, we covered a lot. In a really no, short we had some good stuff. I liked it. Thanks for having me. We covered a lot of stuff. So I hope people reach on the Instagram. We get some deals. I'm actually starting uh, marketing in Atlanta myself with my okay. partner. So. We'll uh, like hopefully that. work some deals in the pipeline and get some deals sent to you. For sure. I love it, man. Let but, me know. Um, we appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on, Gino. Uh, last thing. What is a quote that is yours or somebody else's that you resonate with? Shoot, man. I've had this question asked me before. I still don't, I don't even know any quotes. I don't remember any. Um, Maybe you say a, you maybe you say. Oh, a actually, someone did say this. I, there's a quote here um, with Carlos and Sal. I forgot which one told me this, but um, or said this, but Carlos and Sal or Carlos Reyes and Sal Shakira. Um, one of them said that you know don't look at marketing as an expense, but look at it as an investment. Right. So that's my quote. I'll leave you guys on that one. The show is sponsored by the List Guys. Do you need more leads in your local or virtual market? One in 10 small businesses don't invest in any kind of marketing. The list guys have over 35 plus list types to choose from and you can mix and match any list or criteria. We also use the skip trace list and provide up to seven numbers and email addresses. Every list you purchase will be scrubbed against previous purchases. The list guys are here to save you time. Contact the list guys today at www.1listguys.com. That's www.thenumber1listguys.com. All right, there you go. We appreciate you coming on. Thanks for your time. For sure, man. Thanks for having me. Mm-hmm.